Hi, this is me, Tony, and this is a continuation of my previous presentation about Phoenician magic Arslan Tash amulets. Today we are going to talk about the second amulet called AT2, Arslan Tash amulet number two, and its association with the belief in the evil eye. In this slide, uh, you will see a photo of the uh, amulet AT2, Arslan Tash amulet number two. Here we have a photo of the face of the amulet, the recto, and the uh, back of the amulet, the verso, or observed and reversed. Here on the slide, you can see another uh, photo, probably of a better quality. Uh, this is again the recto and the verso. And we're going to describe the uh, 82, this amulet, in the following. Slides. 82 Archaeological Description. 82 the black measures 5.3 by 3.3 centimeters. It was acquired by Count Du Mesnil du Buisson in 1933 and remained unpublished until 1973 due to some difficulties interpreting and translating the text. On the recto or observed face, there is an inscription of six lines. On the verso or reverse face, there is a carved figure on it. This is a gnome-like figure with protruding eyes and scorpion feet in the act of swallowing a man or a child. The inscription continues on the reverse, behind the figure, above the figure, and in front of the figure. The inscription continues also on the left edge, top edge, and bottom edge. This is a drawing sketching of the amulet with its recto, verso, and edges. This is taken from uh, Denis Pardet study or paper. And here we can see the recto face, the verso face. We can see La tranche supérieure, the superior edge, tranche inférieure, the inferior edge, but uh, the uh, Monsieur Pardet uh, calls this the tranche droite instead of tranche gauche. Uh, so this is the right edge for him. For most authors, it's the uh, left edge. Nonetheless, uh, this sketching is very uh, good because we can see here the six lines of uh, Phoenician text written in the Aramaic script. And then we can ha we'll have here a very nice uh, view of this gnome-like figure with the protruding eye, with the um, scorpion feet, and with in the act of swallowing a child or a human being. And then we can see the writings uh, continue on the verso face, above it, above the gnome, uh, behind the gnome, and also in front of the gnome. And we can see here the inferior edge of this amulet. 82 Archaeological Description This amulet text was first interpreted, translated, and published by Caco and Count du Mesnil du Bisson in 1971. There are 13 lines of Phoenician text, six on the observe, four on the reverse, one on the left edge, one on the top edge, and one on the bottom edge. 82 appears to be in a better conservation state than 81. This ogre-like figure on the reverse represents the destructive power of the evil eye. The hole on the top of the plaque was likely used to hang this on doorposts to ward off demons, in particular, evil eye demon. Venetian inscription using the modified Latin alphabet. On the observe, we read, and these are the lines. Lehechot, Limezeh. Baal Asar Markaptio, Urabain Itio, Alashi, Itza, Ish Bishaddeho, Ugelain Bishadde I, Alashi, Parrash. On the reverse, we read 
behind the demon na'alti man'al above the demon brahain in front of the demon baddat birosh migomor binot birosh holem ki Phoenician inscription using the modified Latin alphabet continued. On the left edge, we read Holmeti Ain Bitam Ain Ya Tom Top Edge Ainak or Ainim Bottom Edge Minnatiya Tamigalat Phoenician inscription using the Hebrew alphabet. And this will be my second reading of this inscription. Leheshot, Limezeh, Baal Asar Markaptio, Urabain, Pitio, Alashi, Yitsa, Ish Bishaddeho, Ugelain, Bishadde E, Alashi, Parrash, Naalti Manal, Brahain Baddad Birosh Migomor Binot Birosh Holem Ki Holmeti Ain Bitam Ain Yatom Ainak Minnatiya Tamigalat This is a French translation of this amulet. And for those who know French and English, you will notice that there is a slight uh, difference between my French translation and the English translation, or this French translation and the English translation. And for those who know French, English, and Arabic, you will also notice that there's a slight difference between this translation and also the uh, Arabic uh, translation. And I left this minor uh, difference to uh, indicate the uh, different interpretations of different authors of this uh, amulet uh, inscription. Here you will see two uh, paragraphs. The first one uh, will be the recto, the second one will be the verso, and the numbers you see here are the numbers of the lines. And we know that there are six lines on the first uh, uh, face or the recto face and then the rest are on the reverse so let us start reading this inscription to you in french incantation contre le démon vampire baal a attelé son char et celui qui a un grand oeil la laciote avec lui est parti lui qui habite la campagne et celui qui a L'œil ouvert, qui habite la campagne de cette île, la Laciotte, s'est transformée en une masse solide. J'ai poussé le verrou, puis ensorceleur au mauvais œil, toi qui dissipe ce qui est dans la tête, qui détruit l'intelligence dans la tête du rêveur, car j'ai frappé l'œil. Quand l'œil est détruit, il détruira les deux yeux. Ma formule de conjuration et conforme au rouleau. An English translation of this amulet. On the observe, we read, Incantation against the demon who drains his victims. Baal has harnessed his chariot, and a large-eyed Cypriot has gone forth with him. One who is at home in an open country, also a round-eyed one, from the open country of that island, a Cypriot turned into a solid mass. An English translation of this amulet continued. And here you will notice um, a bit of Shakespearean old English to make this more formal and more magical. On the reverse, we read I have fastened the bolt. Flee thou. Caster of the evil eye, keep thy distance from men's heads, thou who puttest an end to their wits. Thine evil eye beats, by virtue of the unblemished eye. It is thy casting of the evil eye 
that will be brought to an end. This incantation against him is like the scrolls. An Arabic translation of this amulet, the numbers you see here are the numbers of the lines. لقد ثبت المزلاج في الباب أهرب يا صاحب العين الشريرة يا من يبدد الأفكار في الرؤوس ويضع حدا لبنات أفكار الحالمين لأنه عندما أضرب هذه العين الشريرة بفضل العين الكاملة أضع حدا نهائيا لعينك الشريرة تعويذتي هذه مطابقة للمجلة الأصلية. Comments on this inscription Phoenician vocabulary. لحشات meaning whispering incantation, charm, conjuration. This word has already been discussed in my previous presentation about the Arslan Tash amulet number one. Just the previous video presentation. The second word is the word limetseh, meaning to the demon who drains his victims dry, like the vampire demon. Matzah or matzas in Hebrew means sucked out or drained out. Matzah, the dry, famous, unleavened flatbread of Passover, and it's similar bread that's used for the uh, Eucharistic. Uh, service in the Western Church. In Arabic, the word massa means to suck. Baal asar markapti or markaptiyo. This expression means Baal has harnessed his chariot and it means to be ready for war. Baal is the cloud rider in the Ugaritic myth. Of Baalu. The same figure is found in the Bible describing God Himself, like in Isaiah 66 15 to 16. And I quote For behold, the Lord will come in fire, and his chariots like the whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. Close quote. Or in Psalm 104, verse 3, he lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He walks upon the wings of the wind. Close quote. Comments on this inscription, Phoenician vocabulary. The word asar on its own means to tie, to bind, to harness. And it's similar to Hebrew and Aramaic, the word Asar. Mirkabat, meaning chariot. Same in Hebrew with the famous word Mirkava, the famous Israeli tank name. In Arabic, we say also Markaba or, or Araba. Markaba. Merkapti. His chariot, Merkaptiyo, in the old Canaanite fashion way of saying it. So Merkaptiyo in Canaanite became Merkapti in Phoenicia. Urabbain, wow is a conjunction. Rab is big or large. Ain meaning is the eye meaning the person who has a big or large eye, the large light. Iteo, meaning with him, like the name Ethobal, meaning Baal is with him. 
Alashii, meaning the Cypriot, the person from Cyprus, the large eye Cypriot. Alasia or Alasia, meaning Cyprus. Yetsa, meaning to go out, to come out, to exit, to come forth, and it's similar to Hebrew. Comments on this inscription, more Phoenician vocabulary. The word each, a Phoenician determinative pronoun, means who, which, that. Bishado or Bishadeho. B is a locative pronoun. Shade means field, farmland, plain, region, land, inland. Usually in Phoenician, we don't have the H at the end. The H could be an Aramaic. Matres lectionis addition, harfalla. Ugelain, wu is a conjunction, or it's the vav or the wow. Gil is similar to the Hebrew word gelal, meaning to roll, and in a figurative sense could mean dazzle or roll oneself onto God. This word is also similar to the word gilli, the word we use as children in Lebanon for marble toys which are small spherical objects made of glass that we used to play with in the 70s and 80s of the last century. So I could say that Gelain means a spherical dazzling eye. E meaning island in Phoenician and Hebrew. In this context, the island of Cyprus. E Beshem is an example of another island, the island of spices, which became Ebusus or Ebusos and then Ibiza. Ebusos in um, Greek and then Ibiza, the, the name now. It's the famous tourist destination island in Spain, which was in the past a Phoenician and a Punic colony. Comments on this inscription, more Phoenician vocabulary. The word karash, meaning to coagulate, like milk turning into cheese. In Lebanese, to become arishi or karishi. To be joined together, to become a solid mass, to become frozen. Similar meanings of this word in sister languages like Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac and Arabic. Naalti manal, meaning I have fastened or locked the bolt of the door. And this expression is similar to Hebrew. Brah ain, brah is an imperative form of the verb parah, meaning to flee, to withdraw, to depart, to waste. And it has similar meanings in um, Ugaritic, Hebrew, and Arabic. Ain means I, and in this context means the evil I. Badat means to separate, to dissipate. Badat, loneliness in Hebrew. Badada in Arabic means to do away with, to dissipate, to squander. Comments on this inscription, more Phoenician vocabulary. The word be rosh, be is preposition meaning in. Rosh means head, brain, mind, head of a group, senator, headland, cape, promontory, capital of a column. And it's similar to Hebrew. In Arabic, the word, similar word be, would be ras. In this context, it means head, brain, or mind. Migomor, from the verb gomor, meaning to destroy, to end, to come to an end, to complete. Migomor, meaning destroyer. It's similar to Hebrew and Aramaic. A similar word in Arabic would be jama'a, meaning to collect. Another similar word in Arabic could be jamr. And it means what remains of the burned wood in the fire. 
burned red coal. The expression be not birosh holem, meaning literally the intelligence and the head of the dreamer. In Arabic, a similar expression would be banati afkar al halimin, the daughters of the mind of the dreamer. In Hebrew, binna means intelligence, wisdom, intellect, and understanding. Holem from the verb halam, meaning to dream. The word here means a dreamer, holem dreamer. Same in Hebrew and Arabic. Comments on this inscription, Phoenician vocabulary. And this would be the last slide about Phoenician vocabulary in this inscription. Key is a subordinating conjunction. And the yod at the end is likely an addition for Aramaic matris lexionis. Usually in Phoenician, a key is written uh, with the calf letter without the yod at the end. So the yod was used um, to help with the uh, good pronunciation of this uh, word. Hence the matris lexionis or harf al-alla as we say it in Arabic. Key means because as a result of that. Holmetti, second word, is, a, is similar uh, to the uh, Hebrew verb halam, meaning to strike, to slap in the face, to smite. T at the end of holmetti is for the first and second person singular conjugation. So we say anochi holmetti, I strike or slap. And for the second person, we say ata meaning you, holmetta, so you strike. Halama is a slap in the face in Ugaritic. A similar word in Arabic would be latama. And here you can see uh, the closeness between the different uh, Semitic languages. The expression bitamain, b is preposition meaning in, tam meaning perfect, complete, I have already discussed the word tam in many previous presentations. Ain means I. So the expression means by the unblemished or the perfect I. Yatom aenak or ainim. So some authors have read the last letter here as kaf, some others have read it as mim. So yatim meaning bereaved of parents or orphan. Or yatom from the verb tam meaning complete, put an end to. So the expression means put an end to your evil eye or make your evil eye or eyes an orphan of its parents. And because of this uh, expression here, we had different interpretations by different authors of this last part of the um, inscription. Minnati or minnatiya kamigallat my formula of conjuration is similar to the scroll. Not here the word migallat, it's still used even to this day as majalla in, in Arabic, classical Arabic, and it means a journal or magazine. Additional comments on 81 amulet. I wish to add two comments on the 81 amulet presentation. So in my previous presentation, I mentioned that Dr. Charles Krahmalkov, in his many books which I have, tends to ignore 81 and 82, as if these were not Phoenician inscriptions at all. And I do not know why. Actually, I know why. I think Dr. Krahmalkov, like some other scholars, does not consider these two inscriptions as pure Phoenicians, but as belonging to a certain fringe of a Phoenico Aramaic dialect, and therefore he disregarded them from his books. Another problem uh, with uh, that I didn't mention or didn't allude to in my previous uh, presentation was the problem in the line 17. Uh, and 18 of the 81, where we read, Wushe Baat Sarati, Wishmone Eshat Baal Kadosh. So there is a problem here. 
if shmone is plural, then eshat should be eshatot, because eshat is singular. And we know in Phoenician, uh, the plural of eshat is eshatot. But if wishmonit, the eighth, or the eighth wife, or wife number eight, is the right word, then eshat is correct. Looking at the inscription, it seems like the H is unclear and could have actually been a T. So that's why I wanted to mention um, this uh, here. Arslan Tash Amulet number two and the evil eye. The evil eye is a supernatural belief in a curse brought about by a malevolent glare, usually given to a person when one is unaware. The belief in the evil eye dates back about 5,000 years. It's found in many cultures in the Mediterranean world, as well as Western Asia and Central Asia, with such cultures often believing that receiving the evil eye will cause misfortune or injury. It appears that this belief first started in Mesopotamia and then moved westwards. Belief in the evil eye is attested in texts from ancient Ugarit, which was destroyed circa 1180 BC. Unfortunately, I do not have these texts to share with you, so you are welcome to share them, if you have them, in the comment section below, or links to them in the comment section below. Arslan Tash Amulet No. 2 is a Phoenician example from the 8th century BC of the belief in the evil eye, in the Phoenician and probably the Aramaic word, and how to deal with this evil eye. Ancient Greeks and Romans with the evil eye. Ancient Greek authors frequently mentioned the Ophthalmos Vascanos, evil eye in Greek. Classical authors attempted both to describe and explain the function of the evil eye. Plutarch, in his work entitled Symposium, has a separate chapter describing such beliefs. In his scientific explanation, he stated that the eyes were the chief, if not sole, source of the deadly rays that were supposed to spring up like poison darts from the inner recesses of a person possessing the evil eye. Plutarch treated the phenomenon of the evil eye as something seemingly inexplicable that is a source of wonder and cause of incredulity. Pliny the Elder described the ability of certain African enchanters to have the what, power of fascination with the eyes and can even kill those on whom they fix their, glaze, their gaze. Close quote. The idea of the evil eyes appears in the poetry of Virgil, the famous Roman poet. In a conversation between the shepherds, Menalcas and Damoetas, in the passage, Menalcas is lamenting the poor health of his flock by saying, quote, What eye is that that has fascinated my tender lambs? Close quote. Ancient Greeks and Romans with the evil eye. Ancient Greeks and Romans believed that the evil eye could affect both humans and animals for example, cattle and sheep. The belief in the evil eye during antiquity varied across different regions and periods. The evil eye was not feared with equal intensity in every corner of the Roman Empire. There were places in which people felt more conscious of the danger of the evil eye. In Roman times, not only were individuals considered to possess the power of the evil eye, but whole tribes, especially those of Pontus and Cistia, were believed to be transmitters of the evil eye. Greek placed talismans in their houses and wore amulets to protect them from the evil eye. Pesistratus hung the figure of a kind of a grasshopper before the Acropolis of Athens for protection. The phallic charm, called fascinum in Latin, from the verb fascinare, to cast a spell, is the origin of the English word fascinate. 
is one example of an apotropaic object used against the evil eye, an object toward off the evil eye. The evil eye in Judaism and Islam. Belief in the evil eye is found in the Islamic doctrine, based upon the statement of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. The influence of an evil eye is a fact, he said, in Sahih Muslim, Book 26, number 5427. In Islam, there is a prayer to heal from the evil eye called Ar-Rafiyya Ash-Shar'iyya, Islamic legal remedial or healing invocation. There is one Ruqiyya attributed to the Prophet himself. All Ruqiyyas usually include several verses of the Quran that deal with demons and jinns. Authentic practices of warding off of the evil eye are also commonly practiced by Muslims, rather than directly expressing appreciation of, for example, a child's beauty, it's customary to say, Masha Allah, that is, God has willed it, or invoking God's blessing upon the object or person that is being admired. In Judaism, the evil eye is mentioned several times in the classic Pirke Avot. Rabbi Eliezer, Eliezer ben Hurkanus or Hirkanus, was one of the most prominent sages of the first and second century AD in Judea. Said an evil eye is worse than a bad friend, a bad neighbor, or even an evil heart. The evil eye in Judaism and Bible. Many observant Jews avoid talking about valuable items they own, good luck that has come to them, and in particular their children. If any of these are mentioned, the speaker and all the listener will say, Pliyayin hara, Hebrew meaning without an evil eye, or in Yiddish, Kain ein na hara, often shortened to Kenara, no evil eye. Another way to ward off the evil eye is to spit three times or pretend two. Romans call this custom despuere malum, to spit at evil. We can of do the same in the common Lebanese culture by saying bala hasad, meaning without covetousness, when we talk about something that our neighbors has. It has also been suggested that the Tenth Commandment, do not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor, is a law against bestowing the evil eye on another person. So we read this text to you in Hebrew. Velo tahmod eshat re'echa, velo tit ave bet re'echa, sadeho ve'avdo. The Amato Shoro, the Hamoro, the Hol Asher Lereacha. In English, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. This is Deuteronomy. 517 from Meshon Memre Bible. And you will, you will notice this word here, Hamod, Al Tahmod. Hamod is similar to the word Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam. And I've actually made a, a video about this uh, word. The video is entitled uh, The Modern Day Controversies, the Phoenician verb Hamod with the Azitiwada inscription, and you can find it um, on my YouTube channel if you wish to go back to it. The Evil Eye in Christianity The Christian Gospels record the fact that Jesus warned against the evil eye in a list of evils. Although it's often called by another name when translated from the Koine Greek into the different languages of the New Testament. And the example is in Mark 7.22. And we read, I quote, And he said, That which comes out of the man, 
that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, in Greek, of Thalmos Poneros, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Close quote, Mark 7, 20 to 23. Again, in Luke we read, The light of the body is the eye, therefore when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, of Thalmos Poneros, thy body also is full of darkness. Close quote. Luke 11, 34. The Greek fathers accepted the traditional belief in the evil eye, but attribute it to the devil and envy. In Greek theology, the evil eye or Vascania is considered harmful for the one whose envy inflicts it on others, as well as for the sufferer. The Greek church has an ancient prayer against Vascania from the Migan Hieron Sinek Demon. Book of Prayers. The Maronite Church, to which I belong, has a similar prayer. I don't know the whole prayer, but I can remember this part, Fananju min Uyun al Hussad, and it means so that we could be saved from the evil eyes of our envious enemies. Protection from evil eye in popular culture in the Middle East. The sign of Samsa that you see here five fingers and has the same in Hebrew, Hamisha or Hamisha, commonly used to ward off evil eye. It is the hand of Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet in Islam. The hand, Hamisha or Hamisha, particularly the open right hand, is a sign of protection that also represents blessings, power and strength and is seen as potent in deflecting the evil eye in some circles in Judaism. It is for some Levantine Christians the hand of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Gef Mariam, or Virgin Mary's hand. Protection from the evil eye for Phoenicians and Punic We have here a Punic stella from Carthage dedicated to Tanit and Baal Hamon with a carved open right hand that we see here, the sign of Tanit and the sign of Baal Hamon above, the Caduceus here and naval symbols. And we have another theory that traces the origin of the Hamsa or Hamsa to Carthage or Phoenicia, where the hand, or in some cases the vulva, so we have here the hand, and this is kind of represents the, the vulva of the supreme deity Tanit, was used, was used to ward off the evil eye. So the vulva is important for me as a gynecologist, so I'm not going to elaborate on this further for you here. The 82 amulet that we have discussed during this presentation is another form of warding off the evil eye by the image of the evil eye devil gnome shown on the amulet in addition to the incantation according to the scroll. Protection from evil eye in my lifetime. Photos of talismans from my Lebanese neighbor's house entrance in Auckland, New Zealand with the central theme of the blue glass eye that you can see here and here, the blue beads that you can see here and here, in addition to the horseshoe, which is another symbol that is used to ward off evil eye. Evil eye in my lifetime, popular beliefs in modern day Greece. In modern Greece, the evil eye is known as kakomati, or simply as mati, eye. It is cast away through the process of xematiasma. 
whereby the healer silently recites a secret prayer passed over from an older relative of the opposite sex, usually a grandparent. Such prayers are revealed only under specific circumstances, as according to their customs, those who reveal them indiscriminately lose their ability to cast off the evil eye. According to custom, if one is indeed afflicted with the evil eye, both victim and healers then start yawning profusely. The healer then performs the sign of the cross three times and emits spitting-like sounds in the air three times. The words of the chant or prayer are closed practiced and can only be passed from man to woman or woman to man. Contrary to popular belief, the evil eye is not necessarily given by someone wishing you ill, but it stems from admiration. If one considers admiration to be a compelled emotion of astonishment at a rival's success over one's evil plan. Since it's technically possible to give yourself the evil eye, it is advised to be humble. Evil eye in my lifetime and my beloved grandmother Mariam, God bless her soul. My paternal grandmother was such a healer. She used to practice this healing prayer, Rakwi in uh, spoken Lebanese, or Raqiya in classical Arabic. And this was very similar to that of the Greek tradition mentioned in the previous slide. In her old traditional house, my beloved grandmother used to pray for many people from my home village, afflicted, by the evil eye, and most of them, especially young children, left her house feeling better. My grandmother died in my late adolescent years and did not teach me this prayer. Therefore, I am not fully aware of this prayer wording, but I guess it must be like the Greek one, with an invocation of the Blessed Virgin Mary to plead to God to remove the effects of the evil eye. I am not going to divulge this prayer for respect of the custom. Later this month, I will be commemorating the sad event of the fourth decade anniversary of the destruction of my grandmother's house. My grandmother remains the most loved and most influential person in my whole life. I love you, Teta Mariam, and I miss you a lot. Venetian inscription as written by me, recto. And I'm going to read this to you, and this will be the final reading of this inscription today for you. And we start on the recto, and the numbers are the numbers of the lines. Lehechot, Limezeh, Baal, Asar, Martaptio, Urabain, Iteo, Alashii, Yitsa, Ish, Bishadeo, U Gilain Bishade E Alashi Karrash. Venetian inscription as written by me on the verso behind the demon Naalti Manal above the demon Brahain in front of the demon Baddad Birosh Migomor Binot Birosh Holem. Key on the left edge, Olmetti Ain Pitam Ain Yatom Ainak or Ainim. Bottom edge, Minnatiya Damigalat. Final thoughts on Arslan Tash amulet number two or eighty two. A Phoenician amulet written in Aramaic script from 2750 years ago, a fait couler beaucoup d'encre, as we say in French, made a lot of ink flow, or in other words, led to an extensive research and 38 slides written about it, with this presentation of mine. This amulet has joined the past with the present and showed that the belief in the evil eye is still strong among the descendants of the Phoenicians, the Lebanese people living in Lebanon and abroad. In addition to many other peoples, and up to 40% of the human population on Earth, according to Wikipedia. 
The belief in the evil eye was also common between the Phoenicians and their neighbors in and around the Mare Phoenicum, the Mediterranean Sea, namely their arch antagonists slash enemies, the Greeks and the Romans. The evil eye has in a way joined Phoenician paganism with biblical and rabbinic Judaism, Christianity with even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ mentioning it in the Gospels, and finally with the Islamic religion where the Prophet himself composed a special healing prayer against it. Even modern Europeans still have some beliefs related to warding off the evil eye, like with the expression of touching wood. In Lebanon we say knock on wood. The other expression is crossing fingers, which is making the sign of the cross with two fingers. So maybe the belief in the evil eye of the ancient Phoenicians could be used as a common ground to build on it a genuine peace accord among the peoples and the religions in the Middle East and the world. These are my references for uh, this uh, presentation. References continued. And here my last references for this presentation. Thank you all for watching this presentation of mine. May God keep you safe and protect you from the envious eyes of your enemies. See you next time, hopefully soon with another presentation on my YouTube channel and also on my Odyssey channel. God bless you all.